Hello everyone, my name is Whistler and welcome back to another episode of my Hardcore series. I'm sitting up here with uh, Scylla, Charybdis and Gary because I've just realised that I didn't actually raid the ocean monument that I got these guys from. So uh, yeah, let's just go and do that real quick before I get into the meat of this, this episode. <laughs> oh no, don't shoot me. <laughs> but yeah, so I need to raid this mon monument. There's no Elder Guardians because I kidnapped them, they're, they're behind me. But I will just go and remove this uh, this mining fatigue. So, hello cows. Just uh, quickly get in and out. <laughs> let's just drink that milk. There we go. No more mining fatigue. So, yeah, let's just raid the monument. So, there's no Elder Guardians in here. But there should be sponge and gold. Or well, that's the hope, anyway. Okay, this is uh, only one, one way to go from the entrance. <laughs> It's a very linear monument from the look of it. And I've just realised that I don't have water breathing potions on me. So uh, I'll just kill this guardian. There we go. And <laughs> do I have any on me? <laughs> I think I've just run in here without thinking. <laughs> oh dear, I don't think I have any water breathing potions. It's alright though, I can just dig a hole in the roof like this. It's fine. Who needs water breathing potions? Oh, sponge! Oh, that was quick and easy to get, uh, very close to the entrance. So, yeah, I'll just gather all of this up. Oh, I've come across one of my stone walls that I've put in here previously. <laughs> Let's just, uh, break my way through here. This is one of the Elder Guardian chambers that I took them from. Oh, just broken all my rails. <laughs> this is a very linear ocean monument. There's only, like, one path to go. So I've just been led around, like, the entire thing. <laughs> just trying to find like the gold room and yeah oh I found the gold room don't mind me I will harvest all of your gold it's mine now oh and there's a second sponge room oh I love it when ocean monuments generate with two this is just next to the right next to the gold room too so yeah that's the ocean monument raided so we'd better send off and uh, say goodbye to Scylla, Charybdis and Gary and head back home, where I can do what I actually wanted to do in today's episode. <laughs> so yeah, we're back home again, and I'm happy to say we got a decent amount of loot from that monument. It's, uh, it's not often that you get monuments with two sponge rooms, but it does happen. And yeah, now I've got a stack and one sponge from just that one mon monument, which is very cool. And I've also got the eight gold too. I do actually have more sponge, I've just realised that I didn't actually collect all the sponge that I used last episode. <laughs> it's just stuck in that ocean monument, I should probably go back and reclaim that at some point. But oh well. Now I happened to hop into one of Phil's live streams recently, uh, because he, he is the guy that ins inspired me to play hardcore, and I happened to ask him if he wanted to name one of the one of the creepers in my world, and he said Dave, and his chat seemed pretty set on the name Dave too, so let's uh... Let's go with that. Let's name one of the creepers Dave. And let, yeah, let's just name this creeper. Oh, I've lost that glass block, that's fine though. Hello Dave. Uh, let's just fill that up and we'll remove the dirt blocks too to mark them as complete. There we go. Excellent stuff. That's one more creeper done. Uh, feel free to suggest some more creeper names for, for my creeper tree. I've, I've still got plenty left to name, so yeah, have at it. I'd like some fun ones. And one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to light up the area around my base a little bit more so that I'm not bothered when I'm working on the project for today's episode. So <laughs> it's going to be quite extensive time lengthwise, so let's go. And welcome back! Many torches later, I have completely spawn-proofed this area over here so that I'm not going to be bothered by mobs while I work on the lake in today's episode, because that's what the project is. So you can see there's no mob spawning other than that one creeper down there, so I've, I've clearly missed a spot. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it should be enough for, for today, I think. I do plan to spawn-proof everything around my base at some point anyway, but yeah. It's good stuff. And for today, I'm also going to need to reclaim some of these shulker boxes, because I don't know how many I've got left. So I'm going to take these leaf boxes, and I'm going to shove those into some chests. There we go. Let's just take all of these out. That's some good shulker boxes for today. So one of the things I would like to do today is I'd like to go on a resource grind for coral, and also a lot of sand. Just just for the lake project, I think, uh, I think it would be cool to have a custom coral reef. 
at my base. I think I think that would be cool. So let's just make sure I've got Prismarine and I've got a conduit as well. That's good. And we'll bring that with me to a coral reef and we'll begin to mine that out. So let's go to the coral reef. And here we go. We have arrived at the coral reef. Right. Okay. So I guess uh, I, I do like uh, the coral blocks. They, they're all very pretty look at and I, I I just think it would go really well with my base back at the back at well really well with the creeper tree back at my base so yeah let's just uh, mine a bunch of these up and we'll collect up all the resources and then we'll go back home again and I'll also mine out some sand as well I, I think that would be a good idea but yeah let's set up the conduit first because I do need to be able to breathe underwater and it would also do pretty well to be able to see most of these things too so let's just uh let's just set up the conduit here here is a good spot. And there we go, conduit is basically complete. Excellent. Right, so I guess it's time I set off this time lapse of me harvesting this entire, well not the entire, most of the coral biome. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I got plenty of resources from that, plenty of sand, plenty of coral, and I also got some uh, warped wood blocks as well because uh, I, I think I think I don't really have any of those, so uh, I just thought it would be good to have. So as you can see, I've gotten all of these coral fans and uh, corals and sea pickles, excellent stuff, and I've gotten all of these coral blocks too, and oh hang on, I thought I had two shulkers of that, hang on. And I've also gotten plenty of sand, all of this sand, lovely stuff. But I do think I'm missing a shulker of coral blocks somewhere. I hope I didn't leave that in the coral reef and let it despawn or something. It's not in my inventory. I hope it's in my under chest. Is it in my under chest? Is it this box? No. No, 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 no. Yes! Excellent stuff. Right, okay. I, I, <laughs> I, I thought I'd lost it. <laughs> There we go, all of those coral blocks too. I'm glad I didn't lose it. But yes, I also have some very damaged shovels at the moment, and they need healing. So let's go do that. Now, I will admit, this is not the best XP farm in the world, but it does get me some, get me a lot of emeralds. You know, villagers aren't a bad XP farm, but they're not the best either. But they do supply you with a lot of emeralds, and you can use those emeralds to buy anything you want. This is the best drop you could ever want. It's, it's a currency. And see, there we go, we've gotten plenty of quartz as well. Just from trying to mend my tools, it's just, uh, it makes me rich. Mending makes me rich. And I did notice that I was trying to repair a shovel that didn't have mending on it just then, so let's just uh, disenchant this, and we'll try and get unbreaking on it. That's not unbreaking. So let's just uh, try and force unbreaking three out of this thing, so that I can put the rest of the enchantments on, because I don't have an unbreaking villager. Not yet, anyway. There we go, Unbreaking 3. And Efficiency 4 too, it's not really what I want. I have a Efficiency 5 villager somewhere. But yeah, let's just go and buy some more m books from these guys. I need Mending and Silk Touch. There we go. Thank you very much. And there we go. That's the shovels mended. Well, not mended, uh, but the shovels re-enchanted. And yeah, I guess we can heal this shovel back up again. Straight back to the max. And I think I've had some escapees from my villager breeder. <laughs> they're supposed to come out of the... Uh, they're not supposed to be able to escape from the output, but they, they clearly are able to with it just being glass there. But, you know, that, that, that's fine. They're not too much of an issue. I will block them off, I think, because I don't want these guys escaping to the nether and dying or something like that. You know what? I'm going to name this shovel Spoon, because it looks like a spoon, that's what it is. But yeah, let's just block off the villagers' escape. I don't want them roaming the ravine <laughs> and getting lost and all that sort of stuff. And I can get under these fine still, just by using my elytra to enter into the crawl animation. Thank you very much, villagers. You are heroes. I do need to move these guys today, or maybe not today, at some point. I need to move these guys, because at the moment, 
They're in the middle of this lake and they're a bit of an eyesore. <laughs> Along with the rest of the lake being an eyesore. <laughs> uh, I need to move them, but it's not today. I need to set up a proper home. Like a library. That's where these guys will go. Well, maybe not the farmers. I think I'll do something else with the farmers. But the librarians, I think I'll have a library like over in this direction somewhere. I think that would be a good, good idea. But for today, I think I'd like to... I'd like to dig out the lake, and there's a lot of dirt and a lot of sand there, and I think that means that I need to make some new shovels. So, let's just uh, make these netherite before I enchant them, because they've got a better enchantment value of the netherite. So yeah, there we go, netherite shovels. Let's go back to the enchanting table and finish those off. Silk touch, let's go! And I'm breaking three and efficiency four, that's, that's pretty good, that's the, the best I could have asked for. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Right, and let's do this, uh, let's do this next shovel too. Efficiency 4. Oh, and it's done the same thing! Oh, that's excellent stuff. Love it. I guess the only things I need on these now is, uh, mending and efficiency 5. There we go. Completely maxed out. Excellent stuff. So now I've got four completely maxed out shovels. Pretty good in my opinion. I just hope it's enough to dig out the entire lake. It might not be, I might need to repair these at some stage. But I don't mind doing that. It'll be enough for, to, for today. But yeah, so for today's project, I would like to dig out this entire lake and create my own custom coral reef here. I think that will go well with the creeper tree. It will just sort of help out like the sort of fantastical element of this and this place. I think that would be a good idea. And I'd quite like this lake to have quite a bit of depth to it too. So I don't like how the normal Minecraft generated lakes are so flat and that they're basically knee deep when you walk around in them. It's not it's not good, so we'll we'll put some depth into this lake as well, which is why I, I want to dig it out. And because it's going to be a coral reef, I guess we'll fill the entire thing with sand as well. I think that'll be a good idea. And I've just realised that I don't have a beacon here anymore, it's at the ocean monument. So uh, let's just go back to the monument and uh, pick that up. <laughs> Hello beacon, just, uh, just give me yourself please, thank you very much. There we go, let's head back home again. Right, so uh, I guess it's time we get this time lapse started. This is probably going to be a bit of a longer one, but I hope that it turns out to be a lot of progress. So let's get started. Let's go.
welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. Uh, I I very much prefer how this has turned out than uh, what it was before. Before it was so plain and patchy and it, it I didn't like the look of it. And now I've got a much better view. I think this has turned out really well. The lake actually has depth to it now, which uh, I think makes it a lot easier on the eyes. But yeah, I hope you all agree with me. I think this has turned out well so far. This is just the canvas though. Uh, next episode, I think I'll build out the entire coral reef on it. But for now, it's just an empty canvas. But I have filled out the entire thing with sand already. And one thing that happened during that time lapse is I uncovered this Enderman here. And I'm not quite sure how he got here. What I suspect happened was I think there was like a little pocket of air here and the Enderman teleported into it. And because the pocket had like a lot of dirt in it, the Enderman proceeded to pick it up and then proceeded to trap himself. Like he just, he just went mad with placing dirt blocks and now he's stuck. <laughs> and I think he's still holding one too. So he's not despawned and I've not name tagged him. So he's just a... Uh, He's just chilling in his little dirt bath at the moment. And one thing I wasn't able to do was I wasn't able to quite put another glass block next to him because ever so slightly his hitbox is in that block there and I need to move him over just so that I can satisfy my own uh, insecurities on the fact that there is a there is an air block there. So uh, yeah, let's just get a piston out and let's move the, move the glass block in, into place. Now, I'm not going to name tag this guy since he's already holding a block and I don't want to look at him accidentally, but you guys can call him whatever you want. <laughs> I, I think it would just be cool to have you have you guys like have a little pet name for this guy. <laughs> but yeah, let's just put a redstone block there and there we go. Objective achieved. Oh, we've got some lag with the piston there. But yeah, that, that, that's fine. This Enderman is going to be stuck here forever, and he's not going to teleport away because he's not exposed to the sun, which is good news. And one thing I also got during that time lapse is tropical fish from that wandering trader who wandered in at the end. <laughs> uh, this guy over here, he sold me some tropical fish, and I don't know what they are yet, I haven't placed them, so I thought we would discover that together. So I think I'm going to place them way over here, way out of the way, so that I don't have to deal with uh, them escaping the lake just yet. I do assume that they will escape at some point, but you know, it'll be fine to have them just in here for now. So yeah, let's uh, place these fish. Uh, th these are okay looking ones, I guess. Just be nice to have them floating around. And they won't despawn because fish placed from buckets don't despawn, they're permanent. But yeah, I think it'll be cool to have these guys floating around in my lake. Very cool. And they will stop moving the further I get away from them. So they do have like a movement distance, as all mobs do. So yeah, see, they've stopped moving. So that might actually keep them inside the lake for now, which is good news. And I have a secret to say, this this lake isn't all water source blocks. And the way you can tell that is by looking at the F3 screen. So if you look at that for now, if I, oh, well, you can't see at the moment. On the right of screen now, see there, water. Falling vaults, falling true, flowing water. Wow. So I've got to go around this entire lake with a lot of kelp and turn everything into a source block because I don't want to be having to deal with flowing water issues while placing the coral blocks and all that. So yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a have to be a big effort next time, I guess. And one thing I have created is a giant chest monster. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's so many chests here. Uh, I need a storage system, like an actually good one, because this is uh, this is not on, this is hideous. And oh, it's going to be a pain to sort through though. And it's all just full of stone and stuff, and there are gaps in some of these where I took out the sand. I used a lot of sand in this project. Like all of these four shulkers were completely full as well, and I used those up. And I think I've only got two and a half shulkers left of sand. Yeah, I've got those ones there, and I've got this one here. That's all the sand I have left. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be glad to finally get these coral blocks placed next time. I think that'll be a good idea. I think that'll turn out well. But yes, I need a storage system. <laughs> oh, I have too many. St I have too many stone blocks. I I just wanted to keep them all just for future landscaping projects and all that. But you know, I have way too much now. <laughs> now, one thing that also happened during that time lapse was a zombie broke down this door. And I only noticed, like, way after the fact, when a bee had escaped. And I don't know how many bees have escaped, but there are still some in here, which is good news. 
and none of the villagers got infected, so I don't think the zombie made it, managed to make it into the building itself. But, you know, it's not good news to have bees escaping. And there's also some issues with this building also being an enderman trap. So, uh, let's just kill these guys real quick. <laughs> and one thing I also uncovered in that time lapse was this ravine. I accidentally flooded it. So, uh, I have already lit up this ravine. I lit it up ages ago. But I, I, I do wonder if it would be better to have it be an underwater ravine instead of just spawn proofed with torches. I think that would be a cool idea. But I thought I would pose this question to all of you all of you viewers watching me. Do you think I should fl flood this entire ravine? So I think it would be a cool project to do. I think I could make it turn out pretty well. I think there's another ravine connected to this one right next to it and I could like mine out like a, a decent portion and have them be connected like properly and I think that could look really cool. But yeah let me know what you all think of this and maybe I'll do that in the future. And I just wanted to sort of test out little designs for this hiding this enderman. Because I wanted to build like a plinth for him in this in this lake, I guess. And I'm wondering if I should go for like a dome like this, or if I should go for a glass box. It's uh, a glass cube. Um, I'm not sure, but I do like that I can look at this enderman without him getting angry with me. <laughs> he is a pet now. And one thing that happened during that time lapse also is that I also gathered tons of iron. And that's extremely valuable at the moment. So I don't have an iron farm in this world. So I just want to see how much I've got because I have no idea. Oh, I've gotten almost 10 stacks. My goodness, I'm one short. Oh my. <laughs> oh, that's a bit irritating. I wish I had the full 10. Uh, right, I guess I'll send that off though. That's that's good. I, I need the hoppers and stuff, but I just wish I had that extra iron ore. Oh, I do have that extra iron ore. How have I missed these? <laughs> these have been in the cave for ages, haven't they? Oh, I wish I'd seen those. But yeah, so I guess that is the full 10 stacks of iron. Excellent stuff. But yeah, I think I'm going to need to breed some of these bees up. I have no idea how many escaped and if I actually managed to herd them all back in again, because I, I did bring one back in. But not know if there were more, so I'll just breed up some of these. I don't mind if I overdo it. Now I also happened to hit a bit of a milestone during that time lapse as well. So you'll notice in my hotbar I have one golden apple less than what I did before. I have seven now, and the reason for that is I hit a pretty big milestone. I wanted to celebrate, and I didn't have fireworks or anything like that, so I ate the golden apple. And the milestone itself is... Day 1000! I've spent 1,000 days in this world. I'm on day 1,009 at the moment, and I just felt like I needed to celebrate in some way. So I didn't, I hadn't set up anything, and I just wanted to commemorate it. But yeah, I hope the next 1,000 are just as fruitful as the first. So I, I, I th I'm having a lot of fun in this world at the moment. I hope you all are too. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to make that the end of the episode, and. I don't really generally ask for likes and subscribers, but I do spend a lot of effort on these videos and it's just sort of demotivating seeing like the the low view counts and all that sort of stuff. So I was hoping to sort of play the, the YouTube algorithm a little bit. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you enjoy my content, then why not subscribe? I'd be happy to have you stick around. It'd be good to have a sense of a growing community. I think that would just be good. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, I hope you return, and if you do return, then I guess I'll see you next time. So on that note, bye! Thanks for watching.